Please welcome Deborah Fraser Howe, founder of Choose Healthy Life, and Pete Sepp, president of the National Taxpayers Union, and the Hills General Manager, Joe Ruffalo, for a sponsor perspective presented by Novo Nordics, looking at obesity treatment and access to care. I heard you have epilepsy. Have you considered shedding a few pounds? You have psoriasis? Maybe you should get on a treadmill. You broke your arm? You just need to learn self-discipline. You would never say these things to a friend suffering from a medical condition. Never. 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 You would not do that. So why would you say it to yourself? Four out of 10 Americans live with obesity. Four out of 10. But most Americans living with obesity don't seek help due to stigma, shame, and good old-fashioned fear. But obesity is a medical condition. A disease. Obesity is treatable. It's treatable. If you had epilepsy. Or psoriasis. Or a broken arm. You'd get help. You can get help for obesity. Because obesity is a disease. We're, We're all in this together. together. So Deborah, Pete, thank you for being with us today. We've thank had you for some uh, great discussion this morning. I want to talk a little more about treatment and access uh, to advancements in obesity care. Uh, both of you work to advance greater understanding of this. Uh, and as far as I can see, this is a bipartisan issue. Uh, so how do we fix this? How do, who has the authority to grant greater access to revolutionary anti-obesity medications for all Americans? Well, I'll start with you. You know, uh, some people already have access. So the Federal Employees Union, uh, the Federal Employees uh, Health Care System has access, the Veterans Administration, the Department of Defense, and even some on Medicare. But you know, Joe, with tens of thousands of people aging into Medicare every, every day in America, um, all of us, and I'm one of them, uh, who's already been through that five years ago, so all of us um, are coming onto the system. And the, the scary thing about this is that we're coming onto the system obese and ill. And the question is, um, you know, if, if CMS does not address this, because it's a Medicare issue, and all of these other health programs have access, what do we do? I mean, we, they have not yet moved the needle. And the issue is that it is a bipartisan issue. There should be no reason why the needle is, is not moved. It, it's already been proven that other healthcare uh, systems can, can take this on, but it's the will. It's the will. If we don't have the will to do it, it just won't happen. And to have all of these seniors uh, going into the system, it will bankrupt us. There's no question about it. You know, Deborah mentioned many of the uh, places where this coverage is available. OPM has added coverage for Federal Employee Health Plan, the Veterans Administration, DOD. Um, but one of the big outliers is Medicare. Uh, can you talk a little more, uh, Pete, about why there is this discrepancy with access there? Sure. I think part of it might have to do with the misperception that the elderly don't get obese. They <laughs> stop eating. Uh, no, that's absolutely not the case. You could have quantifiable fiscal benefits by approving anti-obesity medications for Medicare. I also think there's a failure to think like an actuary here instead of a budget score. Over time, the existence of life-saving drugs as well as life-enhancing drugs can actually reduce the costs of other treatments down the line. And it's not just CMS that needs to get into the act here. We heard about uh, the Treat and Reduce Obesity Act. That hasn't been introduced in this Congress yet. And last year, I believe there were four co-sponsors of that bill in the House alone. I mean, we were joking in the green room, Deborah and I, that we uh, constantly told by congressional staff, well, we can walk and chew gum at the same time. And we both said, uh, no, Congress can't do that. We have to pressure Congress to make this a priority. So, Deborah, you know, obesity can cause the development of chronic health conditions, particularly in older Americans, uh, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, diabetes. 
Uh, we've seen from your work with Choose Healthy Life that these diseases are disproportionately yeah. affecting black communities. Yes, uh, yes. Can you explain what the work you're doing there and, and how we can improve the overall health outcomes well, in those communities? Well, Choose, Choose Healthy Life is a network of black churches uh, across the country. And in these black churches, we have health navigators. Their responsibility is to link people to care in the community, not just in the church. They go outside the church and to the housing projects and other places and bring people in to link them to care. And in partnership with, with Quest Diagnostics, we actually are able to offer them a diagnostic tool that tells people where their illnesses are and gives them a report card to take to the, to the doctor so that they can make an informed choice because they have information that they desperately need. Uh, a lot of times, and we've had a lot of uh, testimonies from people who had no idea that they had, you know, their PSA was high, their A1C was off, and none, until they went and got this diagnostic test and took it to the doctor. And often the doctors have said to them, this is a good thing that you have, and I have to now change your whole makeup for, for, for medical care because I didn't realize these things. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's critical that people in the black community, we died faster than anybody else and we died more than anybody else. And to go on to, you know, change something for the color of the week, the color of the week is green, so we're changing and looking at this disease or that disease and not take advantage of the networks that people created during COVID that clearly worked. It turned the black community around. We, we are now, we, we're not okay, but we came out better in the end for the number of deaths. Our deaths slowed where other people's deaths rise, rose. And that's because we use the trusted messages in our community. Um, people are now seeing the black church as an entity that can really address their healthcare needs. And we need to keep those kinds of infrastructures going. We weren't the only ones. There were lots of organizations that used what they had to get to where they needed to go and in public-private partnerships. To destroy those networks now or to walk away from them would be a tragedy. Uh, according to a 2020 study from the Milken Institute, in 2016, the total cost of chronic disease due to obesity was $1.7 trillion, which is about 9.3% of the US GDP. Um, those are big numbers. So Pete, from your perspective, can you explain more about the fiscal impact of reducing the burden of obesity, and why aren't we investing more in prevention? Yeah, absolutely. Even the lowest estimates besides Milken come in at $500 billion. Only Alzheimer's has an economic impact that big that I've seen in studies. And the fiscal potential here to bend the cost curve of Medicare is dependent on getting more and better prescription drugs into the pipeline, keeping people off operating tables, out of hosp uh, hospital beds, out of doctor's offices, and making sure they get treatments that they need. And the numbers show this. The first five months of the COVID vaccine saved Medicare $2.6 billion in reduced hospitalization costs. One study, uh, Journal of Medical Economics, estimates a $23 billion savings to Medicare if AOMs are brought into the picture. These are based on solid research and numbers that go back 20 or 30 years with other types of prescription drugs, especially those for cholesterol and blood pressure. I mean, I'm here today because of that. I'm entering Medicare in five years. I'll be able to skip a couple of heart bypasses because I got treatment that my dad didn't. Well, Deborah, Pete, thank you so much for your time and thank insights you, today. Jeff. Appreciate it. Very much. Pleasure.